Bajaj Electricals. Uh, this was, I mean, this 52-week high was about <laughs> one and a half years ago. Since then, it's come off quite a bit. This was largely in tandem with the worsening financials of the company because of the economic slowdown, fewer government orders which hurt the EPC business as well, and some technicalities with regards to uh, margin erosion in specific orders that the company has been executing. Sharad Dubey standing by with an analysis out here. Sharad, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Neeraj, the returns have been actually dimmer for the investors, let's put it that way. And first, let me get it straight, the EPC business itself, you know, there, there are three uh, categories to it. The first one is the elimination, the second one is your power, trans uh, power transmission line, and the last one is the power distribution. Now, mm. if you pull up the one-year chart, you know, for Bajaj Electricals, you'll get to know that the stock has, you know, reduced by almost 55% over the 19 months period. So apart from this, you also get in the, uh, if you see the electrical stock has actually halved, you know, from its peak we saw in April 2018. And you can see in the lower end, you know, from the June itself, you know, post the earnings of Q1 as well as Q2, there's a sharp decline and you can see that happening. Apart from this, if you pull up the BSC Consumer Durable Index, it's the worst performer on a YTD basis. Uh, the stock has lost a considerable amount of its market cap. We could put it that way, and uh, even the in the BSE Consumer Durables Index has actually risen by almost 20 percent, you know, going ahead forward. Apart from this, now let's just talk about the revenue portion, how the EPC business segment has actually worked out, uh, you know, compared to the consumer products. So more or less, the consumer products uh, revenues have more or less remained stay same and static. But the drag we can see for the sec uh, for the first as well as the second quarter, you know, with the revenue coming in. Uh, right from uh, 521 crores and you know going down to 394 crores for the EPC projects. But one startling thing, Neeraj, which I noticed was the EBIT. The EBIT numbers, you know, has turned negative for the first time in almost 19 quarters. You know, and this is coming in at a negative of almost 18.2 crores for the September quarter. And this gets us to the debt picture of the company. The debt, lever the leverage ratios have, you know, actually declined, you know, and right from 0.6 in FY17, it has risen to almost 1.5 times uh, for the first half of FY20, Neeraj. Mm, the weakening EPC business and the rising debt have also led to some rating downgrades uh, that have happened for the company, Sharad. Yes, uh, ICRA had downgraded uh, the company's, uh, you know, loans uh, in, uh, in its November 15 release itself. So they stated that there was a significant decline seen in the EPC business, you know, coming owing to the rural electrification orders, you know, in H1, FY20. The downgrade we see is across loans, NCDs and commercial papers, which are worth almost 5,592 odd crore rupees. So apart from this, the Bajaj Electricals give and response to ICRA's downgrade itself. You know, they stated that they will bid for projects with better margins and good payment. And also the, uh, the shareholders approval is in place to raise up to almost 600 crores via equity. Now we get the brokerage in, uh, Nirmal Bank has cautioned, you know, that there's a high debt is there, you know, to execute large EPC projects in UP itself. And there will be pending dues from the UP project, which still remains a concern. The company will also downsize power distribution projects, you know, going into FY21. And also the FY21 revenue will fall as the company turns selective on his orders. Now one interesting thing I've noticed is the shareholding pattern, you know, there has been a divergence when mm. it comes to the mutual funds as well as the FPIs. So from, F, from FI15 itself, you know, the FPI stake has reduced from 13.61% to almost 5.35%. While this has been the opposite case for the mutual funds, you know, which 4.86% stake in FI15 and for the September quarter, it stood at almost 11.16%.